Hello, and welcome to episode 54 of the Naked Eye podcast. This is Nathan Oxenfeld, and you might be wondering why I'm wearing a post-it note on my forehead and tossing some balls from one hand to the other, doing some juggling with my left and right hands. Now, you might not be seeing this if you're listening to the audio only version, but I want to let you know that there is a video version available for today's episode, which is going to explain this vision practice that I'm doing a little bit, but primarily focus on a really exciting new tool that is going to make this practice even easier, kind of creating a one-stop shop for this type of peripheral vision activation. Some people might know this practice as the Melissa patch, which is popularized by vision teacher, Mayor Schneider and Melissa Moody, which is a powerful way to actually block the central vision. One of the more rudimentary ways to do that is to simply grab a standard post-it note and stick it to your forehead. It's already got the adhesive on it. So you just stick it right on there. It's hands-free. And when I look straight ahead, I cannot see the camera but I can see everything to the left and to the right. I'm not peeking my eyes around the edge of the post-it note. I'm just looking at the yellow color and tuning into the periphery. I'm opening up into this part of my visual field over here and over here, which is meant to sense movement and motion. Now these can be found at most office supply stores and things like that. When I was at the last vision conference in Buenos Aires, I picked up some more kind of handmade or you know intentional Melissa patches, wearable patches that you can actually wear and it separates your visual field right down the middle. So this is once again, this more hands-free kind of version, which once again, I could play juggling and toss the balls from side to side, activating the two sides of my visual fields in a separate way. So it was kind of fun to wear these patches walking around downtown Buenos Aires at the vision conference. People were giving us some strange looks, obviously. But what I'm really excited to share with you today is today's guest is Irina Castle, who has actually developed a new vision training tool to accomplish the same thing that the Post-it and the Melissa Patch can help us with, except in a little bit more of a versatile way and actually incorporating it in with sports vision training as well. I first met Irina at some vision conferences through the Association of Vision Educators, or AVE. And it's been really cool to get to know her more through that group. And when I found out that she was developing this new vision training tool, I was really excited to learn more about it. And I'm pretty excited to share it with you as well and let you know that she's actually launched her Kickstarter to kind of create the initial funding for the creation of this new tool. So Arena Castle is an eyesight development teacher and coach, as well as a skier and a runner. And she shared that she has this vision of the world where no one's potential is limited by the capability of their eyes. And Arena first encountered vision improvement practices when she and her husband looked for ways to extend their son's peripheral awareness during soccer games. Her search for the right approach took her to existing sports eyesight development practices, as well as vision therapy and holistic vision improvement. Arena is dedicated to bringing eyesight development to all athletes, no matter what age, what support, or what level of play, especially at times when certain visual skills training is mostly a privilege of elite programs or professional teams and things like that. So to tie all this together, Arena is also an innovator and an inventor, and she's releasing this new creation to the world, this new eyesight training tool to both the athletic community, so in the form of certain sports vision training, as well as the holistic vision community, people who are working with the Bates method and who are already using certain vision training practices. So that's why I love it is it has this kind of multi-purpose use, whether you're an athlete interested in actually improving your skills on the field, or you just want to improve your eyesight in general, and you're not going to be applying it to any sort of athletics. So as, as I get a chance to interview Arena today, and, and she can kind of give you a preview of what this 
tool is and how it works and how you can actually be sort of in the grassroots of it with this Kickstarter campaign going for the next couple of weeks. I wanted to let you know about the Kickstarter campaign that is already going. It's uh, the shortened URL is bit.ly, so bit.ly slash eyesight hyphen trainer. So that's E-Y-E-S-I-G-H-T dash T-R-A-I-N-E-R. You can also go to Irina's main website, overboundathletics.com, or you can send her an email or find her on Instagram, and there's different ways to connect with her, and she can point you in the right direction. But I've already made my pledge. I can't wait for my pair to, to come once the product is developed and launched so that I can share it with my vision students and have a much easier way to help people have these experiences with versatile ways of blocking their central vision and activating their peripheral vision, which it turns out can be a really, really profound way to experience a sense of relaxation in your visual system and even an improvement in the visual acuity in time, as well as the functioning, the teamwork between the left and the right eyes, the left and the right brain hemispheres. So there's a lot to cover in this episode, and I'm kind of going to hand it over to Irina here in a moment and let her explain it to you uh, directly from the creator of this awesome new product. Just a quick update from me personally, from Integral Eyesight Improvement and the Naked Eye Podcast and getting set up in the new location here in the Burlington, Vermont area. As you can see, things are starting to come together a little bit more and setting up the new space. Still a work in progress, but just want to let you know that it's felt good to be settling in here and getting back into my rhythms and routines of releasing these more regular interviews and episodes. I just started up my new six-month vision improvement program, which is a group course going from September to February. And even just within the first month, some people are already seeing some changes and improvements. So every day this work continues to astound me, not only in the fact that I literally went from depending on glasses and contacts to see and function to do anything in the distance to doing literally everything in my life without any artificial correction. Honestly, sometimes I have to kind of pinch myself and remind myself that you know where I came from, right? Even just during my meditation this morning, reading the uh, logo of the trash can of the new company that picks up the trash here in, in Burlington, you know, and this was 60, 70 feet away and, and just waking up in the morning and going outside and being able to see and read in the distance, thinking about how I woke up in this blur before. So not only has it had this personal transformation, but continuing to see it work in other people's lives is just this amazing, amazing thing. So just want to kind of keep you updated with people's progress and their improvements. I'm implementing some new strategies for this new group to see what we can do to find even more ways to track the progress and the changes. Um, I'm really interested in just continuing to collect data and see you know, how this is affecting people's vision on all levels, their visual acuity of the eye chart, their depth perception, all these different things can be worked with, including when we incorporate specific vision tools that are designed to really stimulate the visual system in this really cool way to promote neuroplasticity and certain changes in the brain that can actually lead to changes in the vision. So without further ado, I would love to introduce you to today's guest, Arena Castle. And I'm really excited to be joined by Arena Castle today to discuss some really interesting topics about not only sports vision training, but a particular new invention or tool that that you've put out with the world so i'm really excited to chat with you today arena welcome to the show well thank you very much nathan i'm excited to be here really excited for you to share a little bit more about this new tool but first i wanted to give you a chance to share a little bit about your journey of what's kind of led you to this point in the vision world and and maybe some inspirations that made you even want to create this new tool Thanks, Nathan. Of course, um, and you mentioned it a little bit in the introduction, right? My uh, journey is perhaps a little bit different than the journey of many eyesight teachers. I didn't actually come across natural vision uh, development or any of the practices um, through 
my personal need. So it wasn't my vision, my my eyesight that was in trouble. It was a observation that um, my husband and I actually had when we were watching our young sons play soccer. And what we encountered was that most of the kids on the field were ultimately playing with what you could call a tunnel vision, right? They focused on the ball, they focused on what was forward, and they never looked to the right, never looked to the left, never kind of turned their head to look at whether or not they are passing opportunities in, um, you know, behind their backs, whether they are any playmates. And um, so it kind of made us think about, okay, how can we, how can we improve that for them? How can we develop their uh, peripheral view? So we started kind of looking into things and um, dive into what is out there for um, eyesight development in general and eyesight development for sports specifically. And um, in, most, in the most part, there are ways to improve your eyesight for sports but most of them are truly um, targeting professional athletes, elite athletes, right? Um, they require you to go to a super specialized facility, which obviously is not very accessible to especially younger players, right? Or there are uh, programs out there that you can do that are leveraging electronics like tablets and smartphones that absolutely help you develop some reactions to the stimuli that comes from them. But what was really missing was pure simplicity and the application to the game, right? The connection that you can get from developing your eyes on the field in the exact environment where you will be playing with your teammates with the ball or the nets and the props that you actually have on the field so that was kind of what um, since we didn't find a solution that was what we decided to do to really go after that and come up with a tool and a program that would help athletes um, you know, young, collegiate, uh, but even some professionals, because not every single professional athlete really has well-developed vision, right? But our focus truly is on the younger side of the spectrum, um, mm -hmm. on the youth sports and on the collegiate sports, where we really would like to bring an opportunity to these athletes uh, to start developing their eyes early. And we all know that there is much more to um eyesight even if developed for sports right we know of the benefits all of your listeners um have encountered some level of eyesight training and they are probably as passionate about it as we are and on top of uh, on top of that there might be athletes themselves they might be coaches they might be parents of athletes right and so they may kind of understand what i'm talking about and this kind of desire to bring the training forward early in an environment where the kids like to be and then give them the opportunity to even utilize these learnings and the expansion of their view in their everyday lives yeah, it's kind of cool to think about starting it really early in life so that by the time you do grow up or maybe pursue some sort of athletic, you know, direction, it's like you've got that in the foundation and then it just like sets you ahead of the, the rest because, yeah, I have seen maybe some people listening have seen examples of sports vision training or therapy. Um, there's these uh, things that you put on the wall with lights, like it's sort of like a whack-a-mole game where a light, you know, blinks and you have to click it with your hand and you're kind of using this peripheral vision to, or maybe there's you know throwing balls and catching it with a, a particular order and sometimes there is some sort of occlusion of the eyes or both the eyes or one of the eyes but it, uh, I, I like how you emphasize the not only the simplicity of it because that's one of the things that to me I love about the Bates method is how simple it can be in times uh, but also that translation into not only the actual field, but into real life as well. The whole solution is a combination of a tool and a program that goes with it, right? The tool um, is ultimately looking like this, and um, I will talk about it in a little bit in more detail, right? It looks like very sporty goggles, ultimately. 
that have fully opaque shields. They have a set of fully opaque shields, five of them to be specific. And the way the glasses work is um, a principle of selective vision obstruction, right? By eliminating certain parts of the vision field, ultimately the center part of the vision to um, different degrees, we are focusing the visual signals to the parts of the eye that have not been obstructed, right? And that, of course, as we know, kind of stimulates the whole connection between that unobstructed part of the eye and the brain between what the athlete sees and how it is being interpreted. So that is the, the basic functionality. So it looks like glasses, the shields are fully opaque, so you cannot see through them and they have different um, functionalities. Um, and for so those- for, maybe for the people who are just listening, first of all, if you wanna see it, there is a video on YouTube where you can go check it out and see what it looks like. But just to imagine if you are just listening, it if you just picture sunglasses, except instead of dark lenses that you can see through, it's actually just straight plastic that you can't see through. So it actually blocks that central field, but it leaves, the edges open, the periphery. Um, And you mentioned that there's like different size shields that you can kind of switch out. Yes, yes. Um, And thank you for pointing that out, right? The big, big um, important aspect of the goggles is the periphery. And um, the goggles, uh, the shields were made with periphery in mind fully. Right. So while, yes, they are fully opaque kind of plastic shields, the shape that the shields have, um, the shape of the lens has been designed so that your periphery is open 360 degrees as you go down to the side, up and the other side of your face. And then, of course, um, you know, that also allows you to really expand the periphery that goes almost like on the side of your head and towards the towards the back. Right. Yeah. So, and, and just um, to clarify like that, um, sometimes when I think about 360 degrees, I think about kind of this way. So like um, horizontally, right? Yeah. Horizontally. Like if I'm out on a like when I lived in Asheville, I loved hiking up mountains that had 360 degree views where I could just spin around in a circle and there was mountains all around me. But you're talking about it more kind of vertically where it's to the left and the right below above. So kind of like, kind of like that around. So 360 degree circle around the shield in the middle. Yes, exactly. And I think this is leading me actually to a really good point. I prepared a few visual slides for you guys to look at as I explain the whole tool. So for those of you who are viewing us uh, on YouTube or other media, right, you can follow through. And for those who are listening, I will do my best to explain what the slides contain. Oh, and for and also I wanted to mention that um, real quick while people are listening there, I loved the the little three minute video at the top of your Kickstarter page. Um, it does such a good job of just really briefly introducing this tool and, and really awesome graphics kind of demonstrating how it works. So definitely in addition to what, what you're checking out now, once you click over to the Kickstarter, you can uh, check that video out too. Yeah, thank you, Nathan. Thank you. And there are multiple other things there that truly explain um, mm-hmm. the principles of the visual obstruction and how it applies to um, athletics, right? But also beyond. I mean, the the Kickstarter campaign is truly dedicated to sports, uh, but I think that the viewers or listeners who are familiar with the subject of eyesight development can probably appreciate just the overall application of um, of the glasses and what it can do for eyesight in general. Yeah. All right. So let's dive in. Very good. So as everybody knows, um, we have two general areas of view, right? We have the center view that we focus on very often. And as we develop our eyesight, um, we always start with that, right? That is kind of the ultimate goal so that everybody who wants to see something can see things, whether they are further away or whether they are closer in. And then there is this other view, which we call the peripheral view, which kind of is everything else that is around us. And like Nathan said, 
uh, most of the time we think about peripheral view in the horizontal sense in a way of seeing what is to the side of our eyes side of our head and almost even like sensing what is behind us right but there is also um the periphery is actually everything that's not the center view and so there is much more uh to it there is also the vertical aspect of the periphery that kind of lets us perceive things and movement and elements that are a little bit kind of upwards above our head and that are downwards and that is really really important in athletics and in sports uh, for some athletes that is actually more important than the horizontal periphery right imagine volleyball players just receiving the ball and ultimately their eyesight is uh, directed for, uh, upwards all the time or imagine basketball players or even soccer players right as they dribble mm -hmm. um, there is a huge benefit of them to be able to have their head up mm -hmm. and really kind of scan what's going on around them so that is the horizontal periphery but then also being able to mind the ball without necessarily staring at it. And that is, that's why the lower periphery is so important, right? So, uh, so there is a lot to periphery. And obviously we know that uh, we've got two types of photoreceptors. It is the cones that we use for our central view, right? To really detect um, detail and light and make us see uh, the little things in life. And, and then uh, there are the rods, the broad vision receptors and those that see movement and those that see in the dark. That is something that's really critical to understand. Again, I believe your listeners know, but those who might be new, you know, those um, visual receptors, the rods, they are kind of concentrated on the outer side of the eye and the in, very inner side of the eye. And those are the visual receptors that are very often dormant, right? Whether you're an athlete or whether you're just a general person who lives a normal um, life like most of us, um, you are going to be using your cones all the time and your rods may be a little bit, um, you know, a little bit sleepy. We just look so much forward, so much into computers and tablets. And, you know, even in the athletics, like we look so much forward all the time that very often we just forget to stimulate the rods and they just, you know, if you don't use something, it gets a little bit, uh, a little bit sleepy, like I said. So, so what we're doing with uh, the tool or the, the first principle or the first purpose with which I designed it was really to stimulate the visual rods and awaken the periphery. Mm -hmm. um, to kind of like counteract that more sort of tunnel vision where like the periphery gets sort of shut down or collapsed a little. Exactly, because it is the rods that see the movement, right? And it is the rods that see in the dark. And those are often situations when you really need to be um, alert. And if you're not, it causes issues potentially um, for just everyday life. But in sports, if you cannot see the movement, it causes lack of reaction. Your reactions are too late and you know, you're know you not capable really of um, being the best player you can possibly be. The additional thing is um, just the pure expansion of the world that you see. The wider your periphery, the more of the world you can perceive. And of course, you know there is no detail in it, but seeing 360 vertically also kind of, uh, if you can do that and if you can expand your periphery, that also makes your awareness and kind of sensations of what is happening behind your back, even without seeing, it makes it so much sharper. So when I talk to the athletes, when I talk to my clients, I always say, yes, of course, you cannot see 360. You don't have eyes in the back, but the more wide your periphery, the more your visual rods are awakened, the more aware you, your whole body is of what is happening around you, including the areas that you cannot see. Yeah, and, and I'm going to take this moment to like invite people listening or watching to experiment with it themselves. Um, 
because it's not it's not a very kind of physical thing it's not so much like an exercise or anything it's really just i don't know how would you describe sort of expanding or or going out into the periphery uh if people are kind of wondering like how to do that yeah i think there's a very easy way to start right the first easy way is to just start waving your hands start waving your hands around your face and you can go up and you can go down and go as far as you can kind of behind your head and just look forward very uh calmly easily and start realizing what's going on right and you can do that without any glasses you can do that any time of the day um and you will realize that um you know once you actually engage your eyes this way um your your overall perception of the room changes you start realizing you start seeing the details of things and objects that you haven't really seen before nice and just to be clear like if you are waving your hands it's not so much about like looking at your hands with your central vision it's like letting your central vision go out somewhere else and you're using just the periphery and that that outer awareness there to recognize the motion yes you're you're very correct i am so used to using the goggles the glasses that that actually um because it's blocking your front right because it's blocking the central vision it actually cannot happen unless you would be peeking which obviously was the purpose (laughs) right 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 right. yeah okay excellent and so um you know one more thing that i would like to point out nathan as we're talking about periphery um it um it has so much um impact on just basic basic happenings in life right it it helps people to read faster read better and it is not necessarily that they are trying to read more at the same time but having an open periphery just makes the eye function better and it makes it possible to speed up the eye movements and really go through your pages in a in a nice um, you know s- a faster manner. And good reading has impact on learning, and good learning has impact on memory, and it is all connected. So there is a lot of benefit, especially for the parents out there. If you want to help your kids, um, I think this is something to really think about. And of course, for us adults, you know, walking safely. If you have developed periphery, the lower periphery and the sides, um, that is really beneficial, obviously, just for normal life um, and making sure you don't fall when you go out there for a walk in the nature or what have you. And then we all drive all the time, right? And that is just a matter of safety to, uh, to be aware of where you are in the space and where all the other objects are. Changing lanes is one of those moments when having bar developed periphery um it's kind of priceless yeah 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 i like i like people thinking about all the implications that this can really lead to or kind of lead to other improvements beyond just visually absolutely absolutely so okay so we talked plenty about upper periphery lower periphery you know outer inner periphery And so with that in mind and with the benefits that peripheral view has on one's overall vision and in sports specifically as well, um, you know, I took that and I translated these, um, the the needs of the open periphery to the design of the overbound eyesight trainer. And um, the way that each of the lenses um, of these glasses is designed is that there is added curvature uh, to the lens, right? And the lenses are open on the upward side, the lenses are open on the downward side, as well as on the sides, uh, on the left and on the right. And so that way, when you put it on, you can really see all around your face and you kind of feel like you have a um a block right little square little rectangle kind of floating in front of your face and that is the intentional blockage depending on what lens um, you choose 
So that's for the periphery, right? But um, as I was designing these glasses, and initially it was all periphery only, but as I was designing them and I encountered more and more of natural vision uh, practices, I came across the Bates method and some vision therapy methods. Um, I kind of felt like there was just much more to even sports eyesight development and to, to uh, the needs of the athletes. And so I added um, additional functional uh, benefits or additional functions to the, to the glasses. And instead of just having a lens for periphery, um, I actually designed the, the trainer to have five different lenses. There are two large ones that really focus on the periphery. But then there is a lens that is relatively narrow and it only covers your nose and a little bit of the inner eyes. And that lens is excellent for the development of binocular vision, right? What it does is it forces each of the eyes to work separately. And as they work separately, they develop individually and then and they learn to kind of cooperate with each other. Right. I like to use that lens with a ball and just kind of throw the ball over my head back and forth. And if the two eyes are not kind of in sync and both of them is not both of them are not working properly, then the ball just keeps falling and falling because it is too late to realize where it is to catch it. Right. And then, of course, you know, you know that binocular vision is absolutely necessary for depth perception. Uh, for eye body coordination, for three day vision, right? To go back to depth perception. And um, so, so that is one of my favorite lenses. Honestly, it's, it just does so much um, for the athletes to be able to judge the, the distance of a ball or a distance of another player to judge how fast a ball is approaching Right. That is not just in soccer where, you know, maybe you're getting a pass and you want to know how fast it's coming in. But that is something that's important in in baseball, important in tennis, where the speed of the ball is so fast that you need to kind of, you know, track the trajectory of the ball and really figure out very quickly where the ball is going to land so that you can you can react properly. So that's a, that's a great function that was kind of added a little bit later in development. And then the last two lenses are for single eye uh, practices, right? And again, we know that practicing one eye at a time before you practice both of them together um, allows the eye to kind of develop on its own. It is important in sports. But it's very important for people whose, um, whose eyes um, are at two different levels, right? And they kind of, they have a little bit of a trouble to just practice together at all times. So binocular vision, um, just kind of dynamic acuity, eye tracking, those are all the practices that are great to be done with one eye covered and, and the other eye, one open. So that's sort of like... Um almost like the eye patch version where you, you cover up the left eye and you're only seeing out of the right eye, but it kind of reminds me of sort of the half patch where it's not a full covering of one eye and only using the other eye. It's partially covering the visual field. So you've still got the periphery on the covered eye. So you've got the full vision of one eye central and peripheral, but then the other one, you've just got peripheral, no central. And that, for me personally, always seemed to create different type of outcome versus just full patch, complete coverage and completely isolating the other eye. Yes, absolutely. And that is the benefit of those single lenses, right? Because it really just blocks what you absolutely need blocked. If you're trying to develop um, uh, acuity, right? you are working on your forward vision. So you don't need the periphery blocked. You just need the eye that is being blocked to not see forward. But there is really no need to block it fully, mm -hmm. except for very specific occasions, right? Yeah. Um, so yes, so that's why even the single lenses, they have full peripheral openness um, and mm -hmm. they only block the forward vision. And, and maybe if people listening or watching kind of want to get a little bit of a sense of what this might sort of look like or feel like, this is a very kind of 
more rudimentary version of it, but maybe to sort of emulate your wider shields that kind of block more of the central vision. Uh, if you take your hand and maybe like put four fingers on your forehead, so it actually blocks, like I can't see the, the camera anymore, but I can see to the left and to the right. So my hand is blocking my, my central vision. I'm not peeking around the edge to see, I'm just letting my eyes land on my fingers. And then maybe the narrower one would be maybe three fingers or even two fingers where, like you said, it's actually maybe allowing some, uh, well, for the small ones, does, is there any central vision coming through or is it still just peripheral? It's very, I would say it's still only peripheral, mm -hmm. but I would say it's the very near periphery that is open. Okay. Can we talk about that a little bit? Because uh, when I first learned about this stuff, I didn't realize that I had near, middle, and far periphery. I thought I just had periphery or peripheral vision. So could you talk a little bit about that that near periphery thing? Because that, that was sort of a new term for me when I first learned about this. Like you mentioned at the beginning, how recognizing the difference between our two types of vision, the central vision and the peripheral vision. But it turns out that there's actually like three types of peripheral vision. We've got the near, the mid, and the far periphery. So yeah, do you want to just touch on that a little bit? Yes, absolutely. So like you said, right, if we're looking forward, we have three different areas of periphery. The first one that is called near periphery um, is about up to 30 degree angle away from where you're looking from the center view, right? And then we have mid periphery that goes about up to 60 degrees. So between 30 and 60 degrees of an angle from central periphery. And then everything that goes beyond is the far periphery, right? And um, that, you know, sometimes we say it goes up to 90 degrees, but really if you have well-developed periphery, it goes beyond that 90 degrees on both sides, right? So it would be 180 total. But for those with very well-developed periphery, it can actually go way beyond that, up to 200, sometimes even a little bit more than that. So there are just different ways to look at periphery, and um, it is absolutely beneficial to develop all of them. And with the lenses that we have, we actually can develop the three levels of periphery, the most narrow one that is more the um, you know binocular vision development tool that also develops the near periphery, and then you have the lens for the mid and for the far. Mm. Yeah, so people can kind of have a choice of, of what level they're working at and kind of swap them out. I love that about them, the kind of flexibility. So it's not just like one size fits all. You can really find out. Yeah, uh, and it's really easy to change. You just click the lens out and put one in and it takes about a second. So it's super easy to swap. Yeah, it was cool. in that little short video on your Kickstarter, it was neat to see that sort of magnetic you know, application there to make it easy to, to pop it in and out. Um, and speaking of the Kickstarter, did you want to like sort of share a little bit about the, the campaign there with um, not only like how it works, but also any kind of timeline we're looking at? Because um, I really, I've already, I've already pledged my support to the Kickstarter and I would love for other people too, because I really want, really want to see this thing take off and, and get into more people's hands and lives. Of course. And first of all, thank you for your support. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah. So yes, so we decided to actually launch this product on Kickstarter because the development obviously takes some time and we got to the point where we were in uh, the first phase of full production samples. Um, and that is the first time when you actually look at the physical product that um, that has been made in a factory on the right machines with the right tools. So it's no longer a 3D printed model. Um, and we felt really comfortable to let people know that we have the product and, um, you know, just hearing um, others, whether it was friends, families, the first coaches that I have uh, shown this to, the first athletes that have been able to actually train with it and uh, experience the impact of the tool and of the training. Um, we just felt like we wanted to put it out there into the world 
right? And so the Kickstarter campaign, um, which by the way, is fully designed for athletics. Um, so for those who are listening and are thinking of this tool more as a, um, you know, natural vision development tool, um, don't get uh, turned off if you go there and kind of have a look at it. Um, the tool is the same, but the campaign is designed for athletics because that was the initial purpose of the development. And that's, uh, that's where most of my work is um, to begin with, right? But yeah, but we wanted to put it out there so that the people who kind of get excited and who want to support us and who want to get their hands on it as quickly as possible uh, have a chance to do so. And for those who do not know exactly what Kickstarter is, it is a crowd uh, sourcing campaign, crowdsourcing company that allows creators like us to go out there early before a first production and put our products out there and have people support us ultimately by pre-ordering the product before it is fully uh, made in, in the factory, before we are able to ship it. And of course, as a reward for that, for the trust that um, what they call the backers put uh, into us, we, we provide some perks, better prices, some gifts, um, future discounts for any sort of line extensions and what have you, right? So this is where we are. So we launched uh, the Kickstarter campaign. It is live. It's going to be live until the second half of October. Um, but obviously there's some um, some offers out there that are a little bit time limited or quantity limited. Um, there are some color options uh, on Kickstarter that will never be sold um, afterwards. Um, for ladies who are listening, we actually, while our product is black and orange, um, there is a collection there that's called um, Victory Pink. It's a very vibrant pink color. And so for those ladies who are listening, if you would be uh, interested in that, it's out there, but it is a limited collection. And once it's gone, we're not gonna make more. So, so you know, those are kind of the few reasons for why to go for Kickstarter. And um, from the perspective of the creator, it obviously allows us to plan better and allows us to go into the first production with a little bit of confidence, knowing that our creation is appreciated and um, that we will, we will have an audience to serve. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and it's the, uh, the kind of thing, right, where it, it actually requires that full funding to, to go through or Yes, so we entered into a campaign on Kickstarter and our campaign requires a full funding. So mm -hmm. ultimately, if we do not reach our goal, um, you know, we're not going to get the support, we're not going to get the funds uh, to go into the first production and, and it's going to be harder for us. So we're very, very hopeful. Um, we had a nice start. Uh, since we launched and we're hoping that we will, we will gain the support and that, um, you know, our fans from the athletic community and um, new fans from the natural vision community will actually find uh, value in what we're offering and, um, and will support us. Yeah. I mean, one of the main reasons why I got it was not only because for personal reasons, so I can't wait to try it out and, and actually implement some of this stuff for my own vision and my own periphery and things. But as a vision teacher, I was just already picturing myself having a couple pairs in my office here where once people can start coming in and, and working in person, we can just use those as a vision tool as we go through our eye chart practices and movement practices. And so yeah, totally see how this could be incorporated into a, a Bates method approach, natural vision approach, um, and in, in the athletic sense too, if you're uh, into sports or finding, trying to find ways to incorporate more play and fun into your vision training too, because that's sometimes a, a missing piece for some people's approach. It's a little too serious or it's like, oh, I got to do my exercises. I got to do this and that. But you're here saying, no, let's go out and play and throw balls around and obscure our view and, and have fun with it. And, and that, I think, really creates a lot of new development. 
Absolutely. Just what you said. First of all, if you are a person who is developing their vision for the purpose of seeing better, not just in athletics, you know, these glasses are super durable. So, um, and they are, they are made for the purpose of vision development, right? And so you can grab them, you can swap the lenses quickly, you can take them outdoors, like Nathan said. Um, I have athletes running with them, running with a ball. And for those who are kind of like, well, how am I going to do that? Of course, you have to be careful. You have to do it in a controlled environment, whether it's a flat uh, flat field, whether it's your backyard, right? You don't just take a white periphery shield and go for a run. That's really <laughs> crazy. But, um, but you can take them into this controlled environment. I actually jog with the very narrow field because it does give you enough to go by. And it's really kind of fun to see how the world moves differently when you're not just looking forward. But again, you have to be very careful and safety first, everybody. I couldn't emphasize that more, um, right? And um, But the other thing is, and I didn't mention that, if you do take them outdoors and if you start doing a little bit of the practices outside with the ball, throwing it, um, you know, rolling it, what have you, um, there is a head strap that's part of the whole package and um, you can make sure that you ultimately attach the goggles to your face with the head strap so that it could not just accidentally fall off right which yeah. is a case if you have any sort of homemade uh, glasses right you are often encountering kind of a little bit of a must must function uh, malfunction of those um, in certain situations yeah, no, when you were first kind of sharing part of your inspiration to create this device, uh, I was kind of laughing to myself because you were just explaining how, you know, sometimes when teaching these vision things, we have to ask people to make their own tools, you know, craft your own eye patch, or sometimes I'll have people stick a post-it note to their forehead and it'll block their central vision and things like that. And, and sure, we can maybe figure out some ways to do that, but it's very unpredictable and not very replicable. And um, to just be able to have a, a precise device that you know is has been crafted for that specific purpose, you know, you're not really messing anything up and you're just kind of, it's a standardized kind of thing. So I'm kind you of know, Nathan, you were talking from my heart because um, um, the, the biggest struggle I have ever had with the tools that we as vision teachers develop for ourselves um, is the um, no scart holder, right? You need you need blue tag and you need uh, little cards, and then the cards often are not the right color. They are not the right size. The blue tag fall off the lens that or the frame that you choose, or the frame has peripheral blockages, and um, so that you know that is the. the to give you guys a teaser, that is the first line extension that's going to come out a little bit after the launch. Um, it's going to be a no card holder because I think that that one is going to find a lot of fans um, just for the practice, regular practice of the no card with the no card, but also uh, we have developed it in a way that allows you to kind of adjust the angles under which uh, the no card is positioned on the glasses uh, and there, therefore on your face. And you can use it um, to stimulate one eye more than the other, just according uh, to exactly what you need. So yeah, that, that's, that, that's one that I am super excited about. Yeah. And, and just to clarify, that's referring to like the field divider where, yes. where you've got a card or a piece of paper or something, maybe not this big, but the smaller size that's placed in front of the nose and it actually divides your, your left, your right visual field from the left visual field. But you're, if it's small enough, you still have that stereoscopic field and in, in the, that kind of gets blocked and then you access it when you take it down. Um, so yeah, that'll be cool to keep an eye out for that, to, to know that this is sort of the basic version and then you can kind of add on new bells and whistles in the future. Yes, absolutely. I'm kind of curious if maybe you could spend just a little time sharing about, you mentioned it's not just the 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 goggles but also the, there's a program could, yes could you speak about that a little bit 
Absolutely, yes. And thank you for asking. So for the athletic community, we developed a protocol of about 70 practices. And um, those practices are divided into very small pieces, right? One of the big concerns of the coaching community is um, time, right? They will tell me over and over again, well, we don't have time for eyesight training. And so from the very start, just knowing uh, this requirement of um, developing something that is not very time demanding. Um, I developed the program in a way that can be incorporated into warm up routines, leveraging just the regular props that the coaches already have, setups that they already have for the rest of their practice. And um, I uh, cut them into small 10 minute increments. And ultimately they start with um, just a little bit of eye conditioning. And then we go into peripheral awakening and then we go into specialized practices. And it's usually only one, two or three of the specialized practices and they all focus on one skill. So whether it's the periphery or whether we practice uh, eye tracking or binocular vision or what have you. Right. And so these practices are all divided into just these tiny little chunks. And instead of um, asking the athletes to practice for long time periods, we're kind of betting on the frequency and we're betting on the fact that doing that during warm ups is uh, is going to um, make their overall uh, sensor senses. Right. Not just eyesight, but but just their um their sensorial awareness much sharper. And that is going to then make the rest of their practice much more productive. So while you can think, well, you know, I'm going to adjust a little bit of the warm up routines and, um, you know, perhaps I have to start five minutes early or I just adjust the way I do it. Uh, it is going to benefit the rest of your practice and you're going to learn so much better because of your vision uh, being sharp and just ready to go. Now for the, and, and just to kind of close on this one, uh, we have a general program that can be used by any athlete, no matter what sport or athletic activity you do, you can use it. And then we started developing individual um, programs. We right now have finished the one for soccer. We're working on one for basketball. Next in line is American football and we will kind of keep going, right? So we're we're working on those to really take into consideration the specifics of each sport and right. making sure that we have the right program for that now for the natural vision community um that is going to work a little bit differently for those who purchase the uh, glasses they will have access to a um eyesight training regimen that's going to be housed on our website and uh, they will be able to understand very clearly what practices uh, they are supposed to do with what lens and for how long and how to best leverage the whole system. Uh, obviously, like I said, you know, they're based off of the Bates method. And so many of them you will be familiar with if you have already done uh, some vision training or some vision development, but there will be others that maybe you have not done. And those are the ones that are kind of inspired by the athletic world and just mm -hmm. using some of the props that we normally don't use in, um, in just the basic based Bates vision teaching. Yeah. Cause you know, the Bates method is, is not only my platform for my teaching and, and it's been around for a hundred years but sports vision training, sports vision therapy, the, these things, in my view, seems like they've been introduced more recently. So they've been developed since Dr. Bates' time. So that's what I love about you and your, your approach here is you're taking both, you've got these, these combined, because a lot of times if maybe if somebody goes to a, a sports vision therapist or a sports vision training, it, it might not have that Bates spin on it, or specifically, maybe not as much emphasis on, on sort of the, the relaxation component as, as a part of the activity. Um, this isn't specifically about sports vision training, but sometimes when I've met people who have already gone down the route of more traditional vision therapy, um, I'll just ask some questions about, did you do the practices with your eyes open or closed? 
you know, was there an emphasis on taking breaks and resting and relaxing? And generally, the answers are everything was with the eyes open and it felt more like a physical exercise. And that's kind of interesting that overlap with the sports vision training, which might feel more kind of active and sort of exercisey, but then with this underlying Bates foundation of no, just knowing how important the dynamic relaxation is, I imagine that could only enhance the results or the benefits from the more kind of exercise approach and just finding a blend of what really works for you in your life. Absolutely. You're, you're just right. And, you know, there are certain things we can incorporate on the field. There are certain things we can incorporate kind of off the field for the individual athlete. And so while the program that we are putting out there is, you know, it can be uh, practiced by an individual or uh, as a team, it definitely encourages the team um, kind of application. But if there is an athlete that really has some deeper uh, visual issues, mm -hmm. um, you know, I also teach one-on-one -on -one lessons to really address some of these things that um, are very hard to, um, to address in a team environment, right? right? You have mentioned some practices with, with eyes closed and with really leveraging the memory element and the visualization element. And some of these um, I have uh, incorporated into uh, the sports regimen and some of them um, just cannot be done on the field. Right. Given, given the environment and uh, given the um, age of the athletes too, right? True. That is, that is yeah. a very big aspect of this whole practice to make sure that the young athletes actually embrace it. And you mentioned the videos on the Kickstarter, um, you know, when you listen to the, to the young athletes that have practiced with it, they will tell you that at first it felt really strange, yeah. right? They yeah. said specifically, they were like, everything is black. Now I cannot see anything. Yeah. And that is the first reaction that you get, right? It's a similar reaction than if, if you put a post-it in front of your face, but yeah. this is deeper because it really blocks your vision and it's black and it's matte and it's just, it's just right in front of your face as, mm -hmm. as glasses would be. And um, so they tell us that. And then they say, well, then I asked them to start moving and start walking and just right. kind of start realizing what is around them. And they suddenly just kind of light up and they're like, we are seeing so much more stuff that we have seen before, right? Mm. And it's not that your vision suddenly, you know, nothing changes with your eyes. It's just the perception, just the fact that you are really starting to pay attention to the things that are around you. And it's beautiful to see. So, so for all the listeners out there, right? If you do have a teenager and they would be very skeptical, say, yes, this is normal and you have to have fun with it and you have to be ready to drop the ball as you're throwing it over your head, you know, a million times because that's just the way it is. But there, after a little bit of practice, there will come time when you stop dropping the ball and it feels awesome. Right. Mm -hmm. There will be times when you start seeing the passes, when you start realizing that there are uh, teammates behind you. And um, so so the initial first reaction, the surprise of not being able to see forward, like the athletes said in the video, that is very real. Yeah. And then you heard them say, but it changed so much of the way I see my game. Mm -hmm. that it was all worth it and and everybody's like okay after the first few minutes right the first kind of adjustment period it just gets so much better and better and then session after session you're so used to it that you just go forward and you keep going i really appreciate that tip about the, the time and the patience sometimes required i, I experienced the same thing when using the post-it note to block my central vision to work on my night vision because like you brought up the rods giving us our night vision. Um, this is just one of these techniques that you can block the central vision to activate your, your periphery and your night vision and walking around outside in the dark without a flashlight and a post-it note on your face can be a little scary and a little uncomfortable. And at first it's just like, I don't want to do this. 
But then if you just wait and you just walk and you relax and you breathe within a few minutes, pretty interesting things start to happen. <laughs> and you're not only, like you said, with, with uh, the athletes of like, wow, I'm opening up into the periphery. But when your night vision turns on, that's also kind of a new, for me, at least it was a new experience that I had robbed myself of because of all the artificial lights I would use at night. And I really didn't give myself a chance to adapt to really dark environments. I know your primary focus is probably, you know, on the field with lights or daytime and things like that. But I know I'm personally going to use them for some of my night vision work as well. <laughs> it's absolutely suitable for that. With safety first, though, like you said. With safety first. Yes, please. <laughs> nice. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited not only to, to see how, how the rest of the Kickstarter goes, but then to, to really see this continue to come into fruition. And I know, like, everybody in the vision community is really, really excited as well about, you know, just seeing your innovation on this and creativity. And I think that everybody's going to benefit, uh, the, the teachers of this stuff, the coaches, the athletes, the vision students. So, uh, yeah, exciting times. And, uh, do you want to let people know where to go to learn more about the product and, and also maybe about you and your process, your practice? Yes, absolutely. So the best place to go is overboundathletics.com. That's our current website where all the information is housed. And of course, there are links to the trainer. There are links to the programs. There are links to Kickstarter for those who want to consider and uh, A, help us out and B, get their hands on the product as soon as it arrives. We are currently promising the first shipment in February. Um, however, my big hopes are that perhaps we could have it for Christmas, but I can't really, really kind of promise that to, to anybody, but that's my internal hope. And if I could make that happen, that would be a really nice Christmas gift to everyone. So yeah, so, so those are the best places. If you want to ask me any more questions, you can just send me an email at connect at overboundathletics.com. And I would be happy to answer any questions that you have. And um, we are also on Instagram at Overbound Athletics. So everything is pretty consistent. So any of these places, you know, you can send me a message um, or just post uh, your question and, and we'll be happy to, uh, to answer. Cool. And you said the, the campaign ends in, in the second half of October. So yes. like a specific date that people should. October, uh... October 24th. Okay, cool. So yeah, make sure you check it out before Halloween and, and really consider either bringing this into your own experience or maybe some people listening are thinking about a, a team or an organization or a local you know, group that might benefit from this. Because I saw on the Kickstarter, like I pledged for just the one pair to start for myself, but I saw you had like you know five pairs or 10 pairs and I was thinking, oh wow, whole you know, team could wear these and kind of, you know, it becomes just a part of their, their practice. So yeah, definitely. Uh, I'll link all those in the description and in the, in the bio and everything. So you can go check all that out and let Arena know if you have any questions or how to kind of get involved with this. So yeah. Any, um, any last thoughts or, or things you want to share before we uh, start to wrap things up for today? Well, all I can say is a big thank you, Nathan, for uh, giving me a chance to share this news with your audience. And thank you, listeners and viewers, for spending the time on listening to our conversation and having a look at the creation. So um, thank you very much. And, um, you know, our slogan says, see and feel victorious. So I wish you to see well and to feel victorious at all times. Awesome. Thank you so much, Arnie. This was great to chat with you and yeah, really exciting to be on the ground level, you know, grassroots and, and seeing the, the production and, and development of all this. And I know it's been a lot of work for you and, and I'm sure it's been, you've been really excited to finally get this out and get, get people to, you know, get involved with it. So thank you so much for being here with me today. And I will look forward to checking in with our listeners again next month. Very good. 
I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye.